Hello everybody and welcome back. We are still in chapter 1 in chemistry and today we will talk about Rutherford's atomic model. As we knew previously that Geiger and Marsden both made an experiment and they proved that the atom is not equally dense. So based on the conclusion of the experiment carried by those two scientists which were the students of Rutherford, he made his atomic model. He put into his consideration three main concepts. First, the atom. Second, the nucleus. And third, the electrons. So first, generally, the atom is very small in size. But despite its small structure, it has a structure that is very complicated and it resembles a solar system. So that, like, it consists of the sun where the planets orbit around this sun. So the sun is the nucleus and the planets are the electrons. The nucleus is found in the center of the atom and it's also very small in size if it's compared to the size of the atom. And most of the mass and the positive charges are concentrated in the nucleus. Also, the distance between the nucleus and the orbits of the electrons is vast. So, we conclude from this that the atom is not equally dense because the density is mostly concentrated in the nucleus and there is a vast space between this nucleus and the orbits of the electrons. Third, the electrons. The electrons orbit around the nucleus. They have negative charges Their masses are negligible, their masses are very, very, very small, and they help the atom to be neutral, because the amount of negative charges of all the electrons found inside the atom is equal to the amount of positive charges found in the nucleus, and this makes the atom neutral, because the amount of positive charges equals the amount of negative charges. The last thing about the electrons is that they orbit the nucleus in their orbits in a tremendous speed. In a tremendous speed. There are two forces which affect this um, rotation or this uh, rotation around the nucleus. First, attraction force. and the centrifugal force. The nucleus has an attraction force which attracts the electrons inwards and there is a centrifugal force which kind of throws the electrons away from the nucleus. The amount of the centrifugal force is equal to the amount of the attraction force and it's opposite in directions as in Newton's single law of motion of force we got F1 equals negative F2 F1 equals negative F2 and this keeps the electrons rotating or orbiting around the nucleus 
So that was Rutherford's atomic model. Not all the scientists like that. There was kind of objection. There was a scientist called Maxwell. And he was following the Newtonian's laws of mechanics. So what he said is, there is an object orbiting around something. This object radiates or emits radiations. So as the time goes, these radiations lead to the decrease of the orbit. For example, if this is a nucleus and this is an orbit and there is an electron here, it orbits around the nucleus this way. So it emits radiations. As the time goes, the orbit will decrease like that. So, this is what Maxwell said. Of course, that was opposite to the Rutherford's atomic model because actually, if this was real, a time will come and the electron will hit the nucleus or all the electrons will hit the nucleus which will let which will lead to the um, termination of the atomic system which is not real this is theoretically impossible so that was a point of objection Rutherford said that the atoms emits radiation and Maxwell said okay if atoms emit radiation the um, of the object or the electron rotating around the nucleus its orbit will decrease gradually till a time will come and this electron will hit the nucleus so how does the electron emit radiation and at the same time its orbit doesn't increase as it or doesn't decrease or decrease as the time goes that was the contradiction between the classical Newtonian uh, laws or mechanical laws and the Rutherford's atomic model. We will know the explanation for this in the next time as we will talk about something called the atomic spectra explained by a scientist called Niels Bohr. He will explain how does the electron emit radiation and at the same time its orbit doesn't decrease. And until then, thank you for watching and see you.